Ari, I missed you so I missed much. You, too. you are stunning. Thank you. It's been too long since the last time I saw you. We were just talking about this. The last time we had a conversation was 2017. That's crazy. That was so long ago. And Absolutely. it's crazy. I'm like, there's no way it was that long. Ago. It was that long. Wow. You look amazing. You look amazing. We have something to talk about. I saw you at Fashion Week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, really quick. Do you get to keep all the nice clothes that you get? I mean, you, literally, you wear it so well. Thank you. You need to keep it all. Some I uh, Balenciaga gifted me with a purse, but I don't think I got to keep anything else. Is that how Fashion Week works? Sometimes I think different people might yeah. get to keep everything. <sighs> but <laughs> you is my first one. Looked that was really your first one. My first Fashion Week overseas, and uh, my second Fashion Week in general. But the first one I had was a year ago in New York. So it's so effortless. Thank you. And. The sunglasses Jeremy. when you were just, it was like stunning. It was very royal, great posture. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to sit up straight oh, right Thank you. <laughs> no, you look amazing. And I'm so happy for you. Today's a big day. Yeah. Here we are. By the way, I, you know, we love your voice. Me and Katrina were just talking oh. about how effortless, how beautiful, how elegant your voice is. So you. to hear your new song, Get Close. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. We are celebrating your song, Finally Out. We've missed your voice. Oh, thanks. Get Close. Your song is officially out right now, and the video is immaculate. Thank you. You look amazing in it. Thank I you. love it. It's so sultry. It's Ooh. very lovey vibes. Thank you. Okay, so the black dress with the cutout in it. Uh-huh. Oh, you like that. Wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Were you worried Yo, that it might to, move out of place absolutely. or Absolutely. <laughs> shout out to Jeremy. But yeah, my cooch was really trying to come outside. <laughs> it was. Luckily, I don't think anyone saw it. So. it. You wore it. It was perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, okay, Ari. All right, we're stepping in right now. And the black lingerie. Oh. I mean, just all the looks were amazing. Thank you. How did you get ready for this? Did you have... An intense workout routine. Oh, How no. did this? No? Oh, well, you know what? While I was in California, I was hiking a lot. I found a, an amazing trail. Shout out to my tour manager, Jess. She um, put me onto this trail called Temesco Trail or something. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with it. But I was pissed the first time because it was so strenuous. <laughs> right. But then I'm like, oh, this is doing something. This yeah. is good. You know, the more strenuous, the better. But yeah. So. I mean, I it's, used to hike. I, I hiked that like a probably a, a lot of times before that video. Really? Yeah. Do you like hiking? Is it like I the, love it. Okay. I love nature. And then when I found out there was a waterfall at the end, I was so excited. That was my first waterfall, um, like hiking before. Like I've never seen one. So oh, hiking. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I feel like when people enjoy hiking, they stick with it. Like mm -hmm. that's their thing forever. Do you mm -hmm. think it's like your thing now? That is my thing, but I prefer doing it in mountainous areas okay. like California. So I, I do like it. But if I'm not there, like I like walking in nature. Like that's that's my exercise, that and like Grow With Joe. Like she has dope hit workouts on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I like those. And um, and then I just I've been doing jumping jacks lately. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes. OK, okay. jumping jacks, <laughs> go hiking. Let's yeah. get it together because, I mean, it's just. I love the video. And Thank it was like, you. it's just, again, it's effortless. And plus it's it's you. And, you know, when we hear your voice, it's like we just feel love, you wow. know? Thank you. So it, is the song about, you know, a real somebody in your life? You know, it's funny. I was talking about this and I forgot it was about someone. I completely <gasps> forgot. I wrote it about someone. Um, I was in the studio making this song and I had a crush on someone in that session, or maybe I shouldn't be so specific, but hey. And um, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I feel like we flirted for years, and yeah. it's just like, why, why are you so afraid of me? Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. But that's just how I be in life. And so it was just a fantasy. Nothing ever came out of it. Nothing became of me and that person. Nothing deeper than a kiss. But like, oh, I probably am talking too much. No, it's but, fine. <laughs> but you know what I love? But a that, song came out of it. You know. And I love that you forgot that it actually happened. Mm -hmm. Because not saying that it wasn't an important crush. Every Listen, crushes matter. Mm -hmm. But it just 
didn't turn into more than just that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I love it. And you know what? When you share your music with the world, I'm sure you see it all the time, how people just relate to it and they feel that and they've experienced it. So it's a different level when we hear you go through a heartbreak or you're in love because there's this idea that you're, here you are, you're a star, you're mm-hmm. a fashion week, you're stunning, you're out here. You get your heart broken? Oh, my God. Every other business day. <laughs> Every other gosh darn week. Really? Yeah, it just doesn't work out. And then and then I'm dealing with codependency and, like, uh, attachment, like, abandonment issues, all these things. So, like, when I meet someone I'm really excited about, I sadly, like, I'm ex- so excited and I romanticize them and I get my hopes up. And so I'm learning from, like, close friends, you know, just, you know, basically chill on, like, being too excited about it. Kind of just, like, we'll see type energy. Like, we'll see. Oh, Instead that's of, hard. Right? Yeah. But it's not doing me any good, like, being so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did how did you know these are things that you wanted to work on? Like, the codependency and stuff. Like, how did you even oh, realize that? My last relationship really kicked my butt. And I was like, all right. I know he he wasn't perfect. I know I'm not perfect, but I was like, okay, enough is enough. What's going on with myself? Mm. And I I couldn't continue to be, like, oblivious to whatever was going on with me. Really? And I did a lot of interviews, and I read some of the comments. They were like, Ari sounds like the problem. And low-key, I never really looked at it like that. And I read this book called Attached, even. And I'm like, oh, I'm an anxious attachment style, completely oblivious. Then over time, I'm like, holy crap, I'm avoidant. So I realized oh my. I'm, like, avoidant and anxious. And so I'm understanding why I would show up in, in a relationship a certain way. And why why I attract certain individuals and why they would show up a certain way. And it just blew my mind. I just wanted to be a better person, a better friend, family member, and be a better lover because it's like, okay, me and this person didn't work out, but okay, maybe something will, and I want to be responsible for myself and becoming better. How did you show up before that you're mindful to do different now? Oh, my. I... I'm very aware now that I am very anxious and I can jump to the ex- and avoidant and can jump to the extreme of like just the extreme of things. Yeah. Like, so I'm just like, I, I just want to be less toxic in a sense where I'm like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be together, which is something I've learned from my father. Mm. Like, hearing that all my life, like when we would have arguments or he would have disagreements with people oh this is not going to work that's what he would say Mm. and I feel like that really permeated inside of my soul (laughs) like Mm -hmm. that's how I handle conflict this is not going to work when it's like I want it to work though I just I can't find the words right now I I can't express myself effectively and I don't want it to end I need time to sort through but I unfortunately I just I need to work through that childhood Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like so I can be just a more positive partner how did all this reflection come about I'm so proud of this growth by the way again we haven't talked since 2017 I just was so unaware of Mm -hmm. self and like my toxic ways and what I was doing wrong and so I don't have the answers but (laughs) like I'm happy to be aware (laughs) of my now. Listen, it's the first step. Yeah. Let's take baby steps, Thank right? You. But I, I love this growth and I love this self-awareness. It's not easy. A lot of times, you know, we avoid facing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's just what it is. It's painful. Uh, extremely. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you shared something so personal, your sobriety journey. How's that been Ooh, going for you? Really good. Good? Yeah. Good. I'm eight days away from 11 months. Okay. Let's go. Thank Let's you. go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's it's a, go. It's a miracle because it was one thing to like quit drinking, but it's another thing like we flying and we not drinking is a miracle from God. <laughs> it's like Jesus, he's happy. So is flying w- would you say one of the triggers? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's I'm completely not in control. I don't know how to fly this thing. Mm-hmm. So it's funny that I would ever think to look out the window thinking I could control something by looking out the window or mm-hmm. like you know, 
what am I going to do? Ask the, the flight attendant to tell the pilot to chill <laughs> out or to control this <laughs> to thing? To fix this, to do it like this, to change yeah, the route. Like, yeah. So it's it's um, it's a beautiful present experience. It's hard. It's traumatizing True. almost every time. But, mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm really forced to be present, to also face... Um, to, to be a better family member, too, the more I fly, this may be selfish and trifling to admit, but the more I fly, the more I get real sentimental. And I'm like, hey, y'all, I love y'all. Like, no, I get that. You know, 100%. That's, that's kind of trifling, but I'm just more aware. Yeah, like, I love you so much. Like, even more. When Absolutely. I'm, I'm yeah. the same way. But I think that's messed Ask up. Katrina. To, really? I'm the same way. Before really? I take off, hey, I love you. Everything's mm-hmm. taken care of. Mm-hmm. Just know, I, I, I'm sure I, I annoy Colin all the time. I'm like, okay, just so you know, oh. the baby stuff here, da 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 oh. If something happens, like, I think of the worst case scenario, oh. too. So it's not just, I'm saying I love you. I'm like, hey, in I case chills. this happens, I just, I don't know what it is. Oh. And it's hard. Flying also for me is hard. It's just this, I just get anxious. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so I you really it. understand what you mean. And especially when you say you can't control it. Mm-hmm. Your life is in someone else's hands, literally. Did something happen? Some, so, no, I just, I think as I just got older, mm. like the idea of something in the air, and yeah. it's just like, you're wait, what? And, but it's, it's like, if you real. think of a car, all these things, oh. when you really put things in perspective. Oh. oh, I think about that every time I get in the car. Every time I wake up, it's, yeah. it's actually really probably dark, but every day. Right. I've realized talking to people, um, it's not a usual common thing that to think of your demise sure. every day. But sadly, um, I, I guess there is anxiety around death in general. Anxiety, for sure. But the plane, well, I don't want to keep speaking. Yeah. But the plane is... Uh, Just the, one example. Yeah, Just one a, example, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I'm really happy about your sobriety Thank journey. You. I really, really am happy. And Thank you. That took a lot to share publicly. What made you want to share that? I'm just proud of it. I'm proud of it. And, you know, I always say at the same at the same breath, like, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I don't want to come off like self-righteous. I like going to places where people are drinking. I like being around it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but I just know myself and I know... I said before, if drinking is anything like sour patches, it's like not something I can enjoy in moderation. It's just not right. like I'm not gonna you're not gonna I'm not gonna eat two sour patches. It's just not you right. know, it's not it. Drinking I need that bottle and a half of Chardonnay and mm. I'll be on IG Live drunk and acting a fool. Listen, so at no least more. you know this though. You know, what got you to that point? Was there moments you're like, Okay, I gotta change? Oh I got, or God. I got to figure this out, and I got to take care of myself and my health. I just was not able to protect myself in so many wild ways, mm-hmm. so many sad ways, dark ways. I was not able to protect myself, and it was crazy because I was thinking that I was, mm-hmm. I was thinking I was in so much control, and like I literally was in a space where. I was allowing so many devils to come in mm-hmm. and just take advantage of me because I was just not there. Mm-hmm. I was not there. I wasn't able to protect me. So now I'm in a space where it feels good to protect me. And it's That's like, right. wow, this this seems a lot more in control than I thought drinking was. I, I mean, so. Wow. Yeah. What would you say has been the biggest change, you know, now that you're on your sobriety journey versus when you weren't? Something that you clearly see and you're very proud of. That, honestly, that, I mean, it goes back to the plane. Like, oh, I could do this. That's right. You could do it. Because, like, now, oh, and I mean, it. the plane is a beautiful thing because it helped me learn coping mechanisms, which I've started using in other ways. Like, okay, I'm having an anxiety attack. Now, I've learned on YouTube, like, there's a method where you breathe in and then... You breathe out and you trace your fingers. You just basically trace your fingers. And, like, there's, like, all kinds of breathing techniques, all kinds of things I've learned from doctors, YouTube videos, all these amazing people Mm -hmm. that have helped me, like, self-soothe when I'm in panic. And I've, I've taken that from the plane. I've put that, like, in relationships or 
anxiety before a show. Like, I'm okay, I'm, I got my tea. I'm doing my breathing exercises. Mm. I'm doing my stretching, like, you know. So. Uh, really before a show? Because it just feels oh, like yeah. the stage is your element, right? It's Sometimes. It's really? Yeah. Well, you do so, a great, uh, amazing job that someone you. who's watching has no idea that, you know, you might have anxiety or you're nervous. Do you get nervous yeah. before getting on the stage or? Lately, this tour that I'm on, I've been more nervous because it's not my fan base. And okay. I haven't, I haven't, it's not my own fan base. So I haven't, majority of them are not my own. And I haven't opened up for anyone since 2019. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's like very humbling situation because I'm trying to win over new listeners sure. and younger listeners. And, um, yeah, just I know my vibe is a lot different from who they're the headliner. Right. So what's been the best part about touring or about this tour with Rod Wave so far that whether it's a something you discovered about yourself, mm -hmm. something that you realize about, you know, people who are mm -hmm. hearing you for the first time live and seeing, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. She's extremely talented. Wow. Ari's got vocals, all that. Is there anything that you learned that, you know, you're happy about? Honestly, I'm happy um, to get closer with my crew. You know, I got right. a fire new photographer named Encrypt, and she's great. Yep. And just getting closer with Camelia and Jess, my tour manager, and Lisa, the assistant, like uh, Kamar, my security guard, you know. Just all of these beautiful people, like, I'm spending a lot more time with. Great. And, like, that's everything. I, I would say, like, that's been the best part Perfect. of tour. And then m my stylist, Jeremy, he's always going to just brighten up the mood. Mm. And also, um, different shows. You never know who's going to be at those shows. Right. Like, Philly, I got to see. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but Jasmine Sullivan came and surprised me. And I was tearing up, like... Really, sis, you came to see me? Like, she's a legend. So yes. I'm like, you came to see me? I It was the best thing ever. And lifted my moods on, like, Aww. you know, because it's hard to try to win over people every night. So yes. she just, she lifted me up. I didn't, it was a surprise, so it was great. Oh. And then Brett, my friend Brett Gray, like, it was fun. We went out to eat. And, like, it's just having real friends, like, love on me, like, it's just awesome. I mean, I'm not really surprised that Jasmine came to support you. You guys have worked together before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I mean, the song is a little tricky. Actually, Katrina was saying how it sounds really? so beautiful, Thank but it's you. so dirty. It's nasty. <laughs> yeah, I'm a freak. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's, it, literally she was like, it's so, but it's so oh. beautiful, but it's scandalous. Yeah, it's, it's very dirty. scandalous. <laughs> but, it's nasty. But... So I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. I could see Jasmine coming to support you. It just wasn't something I ever guessed. Sure. Because I know my beautiful sis is, is going through a lot. So it just meant the world that she would just right. be there for me. Is like, I just never, I, it was just cool. It's a nice surprise. It was everything. And you know what it is? It's realizing that people have other things to do, but when they make it a point to come and spend their Ooh. time with you, because time is something you can never get back. Ooh. And it was everything. And it wasn't just like a high and by. She hung out. She was with her family. Oh. And we were just eating backstage, eating oxtail. It was fire. It was everything. Oh. Yeah. I love this. It was, it was awesome. Of course, we love when Cole came out and surprised Yo. you. You, were you, I'm so you had emotional. no idea at all. You didn't hear anybody no, talking about. I, none. But I think I'm psychic. Really? I didn't, I didn't think Cole was coming. I swear. But. <laughs> The weird thing is I texted Cole. I don't text Cole every day, but I happened to text him that day. We were talking about something. And so it's funny. He was like, he thought later on, he told me, he was like, I thought you might have known or something because you texted me. But that was just random. But I'm probably not psychic. But like, <laughs> but like when that happened, I, I hate that I'm so emotional, but I just did not. I did not expect in a million years mm. this amazing man would fly to London Right. To support me, to be there for me, and to be on the stage with me. I never in a million years 
like London yeah. is oh, not yeah. down the street. Absolutely. Like you care, bro. Like you really care. Like Aww. the actions is always there. Always with Cole. Like what was going through your head when you saw him come out? Did it take a second to realize what was going on? I immediately like lost it. <laughs> I'm so emotional. I hate that I'm so freaking <laughs> cry, but like I could not. I couldn't get it together. I couldn't even perform the song. It was over. <laughs> like I, I'm sure I wasn't on key after that. Like I just was like, what? Like, yeah. cause during the ASL tour, you know, towards the end, like I was kind of feeling like, well, maybe he'll come here. Maybe he'll show up in sure. DC or like something. Right. But like those shows ended, and I didn't. I wasn't mad. I didn't think anything of it. But I was just like, okay, like that's all right. I right. did my ASL tour without Cole. That's life. That's mine. Right. <laughs> But so, down deep inside, I'm, come uh, on, right, right, right. <laughs> Wish like you came. I did, I did. You know, a few times on stage, like, like maybe, like you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe he's gonna pop up, maybe, <laughs> and nothing. But London, it was the best surprise in the world. I felt so special. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I love that you pointed out it's London. It's not down the street, not down right? The street. He got on a plane. Yes. That's a lot. That's a lot to me. Like, yes. Because a plane, I love you. Hours, I'm, hours away. Yeah. In a pl- and we already know how we feel about flying okay. at this point. That's, so the fact. It hit different. Yeah. It hit different for me. And I'm Aww. like, wow, you cool, man. Like, like on a whole nother level. Yeah. Cool. Like it's, and that's always cool. Just always mm-hmm. just cooler, just cooler and cooler and cooler. Always. Did you have a chance to actually talk about that moment with him and say, you know how much it meant to you absolutely yeah Yeah, absolutely (laughs) thank you and then I know he saw it like but definitely just thank you so much for just making my whole day like yeah that's awesome and you know I I I think everyone was surprised but it was just a beautiful moment obviously you know Dreamville family but it's just again it's when you do something you don't have to do it yeah and it's that appreciation of life, you know, as I get older, something that I notice now, you know, mm-hmm. because we realize, again, it's time. Ooh. We'll never get that time back. Ever. It's the only thing Ooh. in life we never get back. Yep. That's it. Ooh. It's yep. gone. And that's why whoever you spend your time with is oh so important. Oh, my God. And even on your journey mm-hmm. and and you expressing, like, you know how hard it is, but here you are, you're making it happen. What would you say three tips for someone who's getting ready to begin this journey? Something that you wish you would have known as you began yours. Mm. Don't f- nobody. <laughs> Don't f- nobody. Okay. Um, I would say just uh, damn. You know, I don't know if this is, it's not easy to just find a therapist yeah it's not easy but whatever you can do to really become more self-aware of yourself and like your flaws and 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 the beautiful things about you as well so that you can literally just be better to be around and Mm. like it's better to people better to yourself like I there I just wish I was way more aware like about myself how I was acting how I was moving like I wish I knew that um, a lot sooner. So whatever that means, like, so maybe for someone it's journaling, maybe sure. it's a YouTube university, you know, like, you know, it's maybe it's just finding therapeutic knowledge from there or like books or something. Yeah. Just learn as much as you can about yourself to be a better self, be good to you, be good to the people around you. I Ooh, would say I love that. that. Yeah, and... Um, did you end up uh, getting a therapist? Did you decide I to... did. So, this is my thing. I've had a million of them. Mm-hmm. But I, I get avoidant, and I'm like, oh, this isn't serving me. This is weird. Like, okay, this one lady, she was great. She don't know why. I'm sure she put two and two together. But the issue was, she was cool. I told her some stuff. Mm-hmm. And then she she was like, all right, I'm going to report it. Yo, can can no. we can we get to know each other for right. a sec? Can right. we have a few more sessions so I can let you know, okay, I feel you, I and I agree, 
but can can you can I like get it out can, right. before you're so quick to be this hero person mm-hmm. like I I need a moment mm-hmm. a second to to get comfortable to let my guard down to get to know you so and then I've had other ones that were that were kind of just rude to me and I'm just like girl like like this one lady okay I'll tell you another <laughs> story like she she had the nerve um my f- we had a session. Mm-hmm. She was like, I was like, yo, uh, can we do another session? Because I had a homeboy who was like, man, book another session. So when he told me to book another session, I'm like, okay, I guess he wants me to book another session in the same week so I could get more consistent with everything. Okay, right? fair. Right. So I book another session. The first thing that comes out of her mouth is, I just want to make sure we're not developing a codependent relationship. And she's kind of talking to me like I'm a child. But I was offended because it's like, lady, I didn't even want to talk to you. Um, my friend suggested I talk to you maybe right. one more time this week. And I kind of felt like she was projecting. Mm. Like, I don't, it, to me, stuff like that is like, I, I don't know. I don't know you enough yet. Can, like, I mm-hmm. I wasn't trying. I'm not, you know, like, I felt. It was I a turn off for you. Yeah. You didn't, feel, like, you didn't feel safe. You didn't feel comfortable I that didn't. you can be yourself yes so now i'm talking to someone okay, and good. our third session is this week so i'm excited about that and she's lovely oh i'm so, so happy for you i love her yeah she's great so far we'll see i don't know because i'll be out <laughs> so we'll see <laughs> and how's your family with everything are they proud of you how do they do they cheer you on how yes. do they show their support for you oh they're amazing my sister Brittany, she's so crazy she's always rooting me on online she's gonna pull up to a show Mm. same thing with my mom in every way she's gonna pull up to paris she's gonna pull up to wherever i'm at like she's number one fan hands down and always posting something on facebook inviting friends and family (laughs) from you know 1993 to come to, to the to whatever event i'm doing um one of the most beautiful things this year um during one of my dc shows um my dance teacher miss diane from I, I was literally i feel like nine years old the last time i saw her i saw her face and i broke down like you knew instantly it was her of course <gasps> I, I, she was everything to me like the only reason why i know how to dance a little mm. less like bob's burgers <laughs> is because of her <laughs> like miss diane if i just if i didn't quit because i'd be out if i didn't quit i would have been a dancer but and oh, I broke her heart because you know I mm. I just I didn't want to dance anymore. I woke up one day and didn't want to dance, but it meant the world to me. She came to one of my shows and I broke down. Mr. <sighs> Tony, my old choir director, was there. Wow! So my mom is awesome. Yeah, she somehow got this. everybody to come, and she's just great. Yeah. Well, I think your family, your loved ones, want to see you continue to win. Yeah. And do well and be happy and enjoy what you do because you're remarkable at what you do. Thank you. And there was a post that you did that I thought was a, it It goes along with this conversation. You mm. said, I feel more in control of my emotions, mm. more stable, more happy, more alert, more safe, more accepting of things I cannot control and more responsible with the things I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that where we're at? That's exactly where we're at. It feels good. It feels amazing. It feels really good. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think me personally, this post was something I know very well. And I think, again, it's time, age, experience, life that got me to a better place. But you wrote, I hate that I crave validation in every ounce of my life. It it, It is a truly miserable existence. I hate that I wish I was cool. I'm embarrassing. I don't know when I ever start loving myself. I don't know if it's possible. I can't even enjoy all that I've created for myself. Yeah. Where were you? I struggle with that. I still struggle with that. I, I mean, it's just something I just... I guess I wanted to get it out. I deleted my Twitter too because I'm tired of doing that. But, but why? What, was it just the responses or I'm just, just tired of tweeting and sure. everything I'm feeling <laughs> all the time? And it's just like, but I, I do want to get to a place where like that's not a thing. And I think what will help maybe is if I say goodbye to socials is the first thing. I know there's deeper things that sure. need to be sorted through with a right. professional and. Maybe in other ways, but 
Yeah, I, I still struggle with that, like needing that validation. But but it's so honest, Ari. Oh. That is so honest. Oh. And most people who don't even live their life on stage in front of a camera, sharing their talent with the world to be only, you know, critiqued and criticized for mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. There is that common thread amongst humans for whatever reason Mm -hmm. that yearning of validation so when Mm -hmm. you posted that I know for me I was like oh man and I remember just coming up and moments of my life where it meant so much to me oh it meant so much now it's easier on me because I I found myself more you know I have uh, Colin is so loving to me we have a baby so all those things and all of a sudden you stop caring because like Mm. got a baby time's running and Things that matter most fall into Ooh. place. So I'm sure hopefully it won't be as long the next time we yes. talk. The growth just continues. But it's okay to feel that way. I want to get to that space where focusing on the things that matter more That's right. than that feeling it takes of a needing while, though. acceptance. It takes a while. Because it's not just one thing of needing it from a guy or like oh, no, no. it's literally everywhere. It's mm-hmm. like I need it from my fans. I need it from the blog sites. I need it from... Um, Whoever, a anyone trainer. that you respect right. or, or validate or value, <laughs> yeah. right? If you if they bring value to life in one way or another, yeah. Which you know, I believe everyone has value. It's just one of those things, mm. and I I love that you're honest. Nice. And while yes, it's been a hard relationship at times with social media, your vulnerability and is something that we all love and appreciate. Of course, at times I want to hug you and take in a way and Thank be like you. hey but i don't want you to ever feel like it's just you who's going through that you know what oh, i mean like that's that. that's not fair mm. to, for you to only feel like man mm. why me why do i want this to only happen or whatnot so i just want you to know a lot of people related to that mm-hmm that's real. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. It's hard. It's challenging in the industry that you're in. Did you expect the challenges that you face? And what would you say has been the biggest oh challenge for you? God. I can't even tell you the biggest one. Oof. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many things that happen. Uh, but yeah, I didn't expect this. But really, but really, it's not. It's. I mean, life could be way wilder. I can't imagine having... Um, a way wilder schedule and way wilder career. I mean, I do want, I want, like, the success of Usher and Beyonce, but, like, yeah, I don't know if I've really wanted. I Mm. can imagine myself, like, working as diligently and amazingly as they do. So, like, ooh. What do you like more, writing, creating the music, or performing? Oh, man, you're in a controlled space when you're writing it and you're in the studio. Sure. You, get, you know what I'm saying? There's no chances are you're not sick that day. You're not battling allergies. You're not battling. like Or there's other things you might be battling, but it's just a, a safe space where things are controlled. I love the studio and, like, mm-hmm. writing it out. But sometimes performing, well, I just found out I have allergies. Well, I did, but I've been ignoring it. Mm. I've been. <laughs> this is was, Katrina's language oh, right wow. here. That's why she looked really? at you and smiled and was oh. like, "Yes, allergies." Yeah, okay. it's been. It's not. But I, I'm. I've been just living with it, not thinking it was a big deal. But when I realized it was affecting my vocal performance, then it was like, "Oh, okay, I should. I should do something about this because right. I care <laughs> about my singing." And I realized, oh, like. Well, not that this is an ad, but um, I went to a doctor, and Jaha, my manager, he he introduced a, a vocal doctor to me who was like, oh, yeah, like, your nose is red, like, inside of your wow. nose is red. Like, so all of these festivals I'm going to, I'm battling, like, dust and all these things, <gasps> and it's, I'm wondering why I'm having issues vocally sometimes. I have allergies, so now I'm taking allergy medicine and the little spray. Yeah. And, and it's, it's things like that have been, like, helping me and... Of course, and having solutions right now, it eases the pressure you're putting on yourself. Why can't I do this? Why is my voice doing this? And mm-hmm. all these things that you just thought was in your head, but it's yeah. like, no, really, <laughs> like you have allergies mm-hmm. and it's physically impacting how you're performing. Yeah. And it's crazy to just like live life just like, okay. Yeah, right. And like like <laughs> not, not do anything about it until you have to. It's like, geez, I've really... It's like I never had to suffer. I don't know why. There's so many ways in my life I choose to suffer, and I don't have to. <laughs> but And you're not. Yeah. We got the allergy medicine. Yeah. I love that you are yeah. taking care of yourself. Thanks. You're prioritizing yourself. Thank That's you. important. Thank 
How would you say you've changed, whether it's musically or where the space mm-hmm. you're in now, from when Fa came out, mm-hmm. 2016, if I remember correctly, to now? Music has changed? Yeah, or what's changed that mm-hmm. you felt, okay, I'm, I'm more comfortable in the studio. I know how to do this different. Or uh, oh, um, I'm just as, you know, excited to get in the studio. Mm-hmm. Anything changed for you? When now com- I'm more of a stickler of, like, how I sound. Mm. I'm definitely more aware of, like, okay, that that was a little flat or that was a little sharp. Like, I'm very aware of my vocal performance more now than I've ever been. So there were things I I released not realizing, some. oh, that that kind of sounds a mess. Like, really? Like, yeah, vocally, like, technically, like, technically. Okay. Like, it works. Like, sometimes even with jazz, like, you're allowed to, like, you know, bend. You're allowed mm-hmm. to, like, make these little, like, things that kind of sound bad, but it's good. It's jazz, you know? Right. Like, it's the same thing, I guess, with, like, vocally. It was it worked. People didn't notice. Somebody probably did. But, you know. And so now, like, I like having people like Pierre, who's my vocal producer, who will when I'm recording a song, I do after I record a song, I like him to come in and sometimes I like to re-record the song and, and I like um for him to lead me in certain ways, give me ideas, like ad libs sometimes or, you know, you can record that part better. I I like that energy in the studio of like, um, you can do it better, you know? Ooh. And I feel like that's how you be that's how you become like someone as legendary like Usher and Beyonce they have all this not only are they legends and like unmatched like who's touching them but they have incredible solid teams that are like all helping them and they they're welcoming like the help of like I don't know so so like now like I'm aware of like okay a vocal producer is that is so interesting I never had one until yeah until Jaha wait when did we get here it was this year Okay. When was it? Right, when did uh-huh. you? It was this year. I started oh. using. I started using um, Pierre. He's been helping me just really clean up my newer songs and redo songs and pushing me and giving me ideas and things like that. But do you feel like you're receptive to that? Oh, because you're in a different place within <sighs> yourself. You know, spiritually, emotionally, physically, you're able to receive that. If people think I'm difficult now. They have no idea the heinous horror that I was. <laughs> like, they just have no idea. I mean, as recent as 2022. I mean, somebody might be stressed this year, too. But <laughs> even as recent as 2022, like, um, 2023 as well. I, <laughs> I mean, but... I was really, like, I was afraid of everyone. I was afraid of the stylist. Like, what are you trying to do? Who are you trying to turn me into? I was afraid of makeup. I was a, everything. I was afraid of everything. Like, I had, and I, it stemmed from trust issues. Like, it, just one thing can manifest in many ways in your life if you don't, if you don't recognize what it is. So. Wow. Yeah, I was pushing a lot of people away. Like, a lot of people. Have, everybody, management, everybody. Has there been anyone that you push away that you hope you can work things out with again? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if they're gone, they're gone. Some some people will still be for a little bit. It's right. like I gotta work. It's a lot of work I gotta do. Some people, it's like, nah, you hurt me. Like I wish things didn't end that way, sure. but it's like, come on, man, like. You're trying. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying day by day. Sometimes. But I, I love the honesty. Thanks. And I love that you're not making excuses for yourself. You know how that yeah. you know that's very hard, right? Oh wow. Most people, including myself, oh, don't get me started on Katrina. Oh. But it's the excuses <laughs> to get away with things. So yeah. I just give yourself that grace that you know, you're a work in progress and it takes a lot to even address that. Thank you're not you. gonna get it overnight and you might have some drop-offs but it's okay you know what I mean the grace thing I gotta work on for sure giving Mm. myself grace and I want to get beyond the excuses I want to really start Mm. because I do have excuses I I do want to how do we fix it I really do want to get to the solution I do because it's work yeah it's a lot of work yeah I want to talk about your love for Monica. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. also in your post about, journey, you know, being on this journey and mm-hmm. just, you know, you're listening to Monica mm-hmm. and just, and different times you've also just 
talked about how much you love her. Aww. Why do you love Monica so much? Other than the obvious why we all love her, but from your perspective. I'm so sorry, Monica, but back in the day when there was LimeWire, okay, <laughs> like I was like, you know, I, of course the radio, of course, she just was my childhood. That mm -hmm. voice was everything. It was beautiful. She was talking that raw, just beautiful, heartfelt, like just homegirl love. Like, and I believed her and I just felt her soul. And like, she literally was is an artist that was on repeat all my life like Aww. just super fan like baby that's just why i love you so much <laughs> like that is everything it's yeah. just love good yes. raw love and then she's just, just down she's down like you should have known better like everything you yeah know? so i just i just always love monica and when I was breaking down in September, I, I, when I went, I went on my road trip. I went to Florida to do like this, like mental health retreat thing, and I I didn't last long. I lasted three days, and I got the hell out of there. Some <laughs> shit happened. <laughs> I was, this is, there's not enough black people here for me. Like, there's not enough. There wasn't. I didn't feel that safe, so I had, I had to get the hell out of there. Not because of like race, but you weren't comfy. I fainted, and they didn't know what to do. Okay, yeah, you ha definitely have to leave. If yeah, yes. I'm like what the? So yeah, I, I got out of there. But on that trip, it was amazing. I saw a lot of friends. I I reached out to people to like heal and to like you know for forgive and talk through oh. some conflicts and stuff. So I, I let it go of a lot of stuff. And the soundtrack to that whole journey that I went through in September was Monica. It was everything. She's it, always been. Uh, you know, you both have obviously connected before. Yes. we. The first time we met was Rock Nation brunch, which was cool. And she was so sweet. Oh. Mm -hmm. And does she know how much you love her? Yes. Like, did she I, know at that think, time as well? I don't know if she knew how much. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like all the D.C. girls, at least from my perspective, all the, like, D.C., we love Monica. Like, Aww. that was, you know, old friends that I had. Like, that's what we listened to on repeat. Like, yeah. If you could remake any Monica song, oh, my goodness. which one would it be? I don't. I love her so much. I'm not even trying to touch anything. Well, more in celebratory. Like you're just like it. It'd be an honor to sing this song because you an love honor? it that much. Um, and you would do justice to it. Maybe um, that knocking song. Knock knock. Yeah knock, yeah knocking, yeah. Don't go knocking at my door. Think of it I as a that. tribute, and they're like, listen. Ari wants you to do be a part of this tribute. Okay. Which song of Monica's would you love to sing? Probably knocking. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was my all of it is everything, but I could see <laughs> I could see that being like me. I love Missy Elliott. So yeah, like oh, I love them together when they work oh, together. It's everything. Mm -hmm. Um And you had a chance to be in a studio with Missy. Everything. What came of this? A lot of beautiful music. Listen, all right, Missy might get mad at me for this, but look, I finished the record. I finished the record. <laughs> it took it took a while. We we had this record for some years, and I finished it. And I don't know if this is bad to say, but she felt like we missed the mark of like releasing it. Oh, I might get in trouble for this. I don't know. No, but no, no. Well, it's maybe she's a it'll encourage people. Yes, to, to release it. Yes, I because I don't I don't want to like yeah. I don't want to press. I don't want to pry, but. Um, she feels like there were certain vibes that were already out that kind of like, oh. so she was like, we missed the mark of like changing the, I'm like, come on. She's man. such a visionary. Like, and you're like, is. just release it. And, and I, but I, I realized, um, I didn't realize how important it was to just, just go with what she wanted when she wanted to do it. I should have just. I should have just found a way. I don't know. Because now, cause now it's like, dang, people might not ever hear it. No, please. Yeah. We is this manipulative? This might be manipulative. Sorry. <laughs> I just... Sorry, Missy. It's because we love you and we're obsessed with I you. I love you, Missy. Please. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, okay, I'm sure that, you know. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe one day. Or maybe this means you both have to work on something again. I would love that. I you know what I mean? That. If she's down, I would love that. Yeah. I love Missy and... I feel like we can make 
an incredible album, an incredible oh, yeah. body of work. and For sure. Yeah. If you could do a duet with anybody, Whoa. dead or alive, Ooh. who would be your top three? <sighs> mm. Voices. Okay, so dead, I would say um, Sam Cooke. Mm. And then alive, I would say Stevie Wonder. Ooh. I would love to work with Stevie Wonder. I think that would be awesome. Wow. Yeah. You get one more if you want. Otherwise, we're good with one that. One more? Top I'll, three. Okay, Passed Away. I, or I would, Alive, either or. I would say Minnie Ripperton. And then Alive, I would say, let's see, who do I really, really find really special? Um, Coldplay. I really oh, like Coldplay. I like your list. I know that's like so left, but. It's music. It's art. It's all of it. And the fact that you feel that, I mean, it's the range that you have, Ari. Thank Come you. on. It's the range. Thank you. You know? I love, love this list. Thank That's you. beautiful. Thank you. Has there been anyone that took notice of your work and your talent and just gave you, you know, whether it's, I don't know, feedback or a Ooh. compliment that just blew you away? And you're and you still hold it to this very day with you? Um let's see, anyone? I would say. I would say Maxwell. He just, not anything he said specifically, but just him telling me that um, my music matters. Oh. Like, basically, I'm paraphrasing, like him caring about my music and it being something that, like, him and his friends, like, with, mm -hmm. like, was so freaking cool. Because once again, soundtrack of my life and, like, mm. the music I heard growing up, like, with, you know, in my mom's car, my dad's car, like just, and then eventually in my car, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like Oof. it's just so cool to be like loved on by like so many legends. You That's know? right. That's right. Yeah. If you could tell your 16 year old self anything to prepare young Ari mm. for life, mm. what would it be? Don't leave that house, girl. Stay in the house. <laughs> Um, don't go to that boy's house. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, honestly, low key, as painful as it was, go to school and face that boy who moved on with another girl. Mm. Stop running. If because maybe if she stopped running, then like she could have, I could like not be running so much still at thirty two. But, like, it was so painful to watch this guy that I liked move on with someone else. And how it happened was so messed up. Like, he was pretending I was his sister, but I thought I was his girl. And he, and she thought, um, I, and then he told me she was his sister. Oh, he, he was doing he the was, most. He was, yeah. he was a manipulator, and I, I didn't know. I just was so, like, into him. So I would just tell me to, like, not be so fixated on the woman that you know that moved on with him or whatever mm -hmm. um face it face it and i feel like the pain would have lessened mm -hmm. instead of um festering so greatly because i held it because i um i just didn't want to face it just like flying like it's become a little easier because i'm actually awake mm -hmm. <laughs> to like i'm not passed out drunk you know mm -hmm. to like get through it so I've learned with any trial, like, you got to be awake for that. You got to face it. Mm. You can't run. You can't numb it. You're, you're not healing. You're stunting your healing. So years go by, ain't shit happening. Ain't shit healed because mm. you was asleep. Oh, that's you great. Know? Oh, that's, and it's important to hear that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and we can all use that and apply that to face things in life that we don't want to. Yeah. It's going to hurt short term if you face it now versus it festering like you said Ooh. and having to deal with it over the years Ooh. it's too much mm -hmm. it's too much of a burden to carry mm -hmm. okay so i want to talk a little love okay because of your incredible song get close and the video is just thank you for the visuals because Ooh. it's rare we find good videos nowadays thank and you. i feel like there was so much oh. effort and you just are stunning thank you that's the word today Stunning. Thank Everything you. about you, the glow, the aura. I'm so happy to see you in this space. Thank you. So let's do some love advice oh my from your 
perspective. Okay. Okay. It's the get close edition. Oh, Is it okay God. to text your ex when they're in a relationship? Oh my God. Uh, no, I don't play that. How about if an ex hits you up while you're in your relationship? Do you respond or do you block them? Block. I, I, I don't want that energy. I'm in something new. I want to respect this person. I don't want to do anything to sabotage this. So that's an absolute block. Like, I don't want to be disrespectful to your new love, and you ain't about to disrespect my new love. You ain't right. doing this for me. Like, this is hard to find. <laughs> so, like, nah, like, blocked. It. Is it okay to go through your partner's phone? No. Mm -mm. I feel like whatever you find, like, whatever you want to find, you're going to find. And I think... It's, that just goes in life. The universe is gonna Ooh. show you. You 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 gonna see it. What if somehow? You, what if you see your friend getting cheated on? Right. Ooh. Do you confront the cheater or do you just go call your friend and wow. and just say, Hey, I saw X, Y, and Z here, and they're doing this. What do you do in that moment? Confronting the cheater can he can put the ball in his court as the manipulator. So I'm not. I'm oh. not confronting the cheater. I'd have to see how I would approach that friend because I want to be delicate and not destroy our friendship. I don't want to be, I don't want to lose that friend because sometimes if, if you know, being the per, the bearer of bad news, that friend might cut you off. Like, you know, you hating on my relationship. <laughs> like, and I'm single, you know, like, so you're just a single bitch. You want me to be single with you? <laughs> like, so I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I, I don't know if I could keep that from oh. my friend. From my oh. friend? Yeah, that I'm talking about your friend. That your man is playing you? Yeah, I, I don't think I could keep that. No, I don't see you keeping that in. Mm -mm. I think you might have like an hour of thinking and be like, all right, yeah. that's it. All right, like, I'm calling whoever up right now. Please don't hate me, but... Or, or maybe there's a way I can find proof. Film it. Okay. Film it. Like, and then from a bush? Yeah. From a bush, like. <laughs> Film yeah. it and send it. Okay. And that's it. Don't even ha You don't even okay. have to say anything else at that point, Ooh. right? And now you don't have to feel like. Or maybe send it from an anonymous. Wow. You care so much about your friend in this scenario. Yeah. I like that. I don't want to be the. You don't want to be the bear of bad news. Yeah. I get it. You can really be demonized that way. Mm hmm But uh, they should know. Is it a non-starter for you if someone that you're dating goes through your phone? Oh, it's happened, and they was crazy every time. They was crazy really? every time. And both of them threatened to put their hands on me. <gasps> so, I like, I know they was crazy. Gotta I, leave. I think stuff like that is, like, it's borderline, you, gon', you, you might. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. It's not a healthy situation. It's not. It's not. What would you say is the most toxic thing you've put up with in a relationship? Be it cheating, be it someone ignoring you, playing games. Being ghosted for five days. I liked this man so much. It. I was, like, ill. Like, I've never experienced <laughs> this. This is unacceptable. This is childish. Like, why are you ghosting me and then pretending like we're still together? Like, what is going on? Like, what did, Why did they do that? We had a fight. And, um, it, like, it was a really bad argument, but, like... The ghosting, it's like, okay, come on now. Like, shouldn't we talk Who's about this? Who's ghosting nowadays? Like, I guess we're not together because five days. Yeah, some people still do that. And I didn't know until it happened to me and I I realized, oh, this isn't something I can handle. It, it was painful. It was like, what type of abuse is this? You know? Wow. Yeah, ghosting. That's it's weird. And you know what? That's such a red flag. Yeah. And how they're always going to be. Yeah. When hardship Ooh. comes up. They're going to ghost you. We couldn't ever, we couldn't, e conflict, everything was great. Well, mm -hmm. there were things, there were red flags, but when conflict happened, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was just, it was over. That's literally when it ended. The mm -hmm. fir Basically the first argument. Oh, gosh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No, I'm glad you found out yeah. then and didn't waste any more time on yeah. this person. Do you believe it once a cheater, always a cheater? Or do you believe that cheaters can change? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think cheaters. I know some cheaters, man. I know some other cheaters, man. <laughs> I don't know if. Oh, I don't know. It's tough, isn't it? I kind of don't think so.
Do you think a cheater is always a cheater? I kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of do. Like, but, that, okay. but then I've heard of people. I've heard of people that literally they stop. Yeah. They really stop. But it's just like, are you really? Like, is it? Did you really, really stop? Yeah, like, is it, is this bad? No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but you didn't really stop. There's no, or like, maybe it's a temporary thing. Yeah. And then when we're 80, like, are you back out there cheating again? Like, you <laughs> back know. Back at 80, can yeah. you imagine? I can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can, because it's like, how do you just all of a sudden, you just don't want to. But some people change. Some I don't know. It's not something I can understand because I haven't experienced it for myself. To Have see. you never cheated? I've never cheated. Oh, yeah. I've, Got it. I have texted. So I've never physically cheated. <laughs> Why is it? I like that. Did you hear the little giggle in the background? Oh, who laughed? <laughs> who I, laughed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've never cheated. I've never physically cheated, but right. I guess texting someone, I've texted someone. I was like, remember that hug we did in the club? Right. I did that once. So I guess that counts. Uh, maybe flirting. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional cheating. Do you think emotional? Now I know that is okay. an absolute no. Do you think emotional cheating is just as bad as physical cheating? Yes. If you're talking about, I need you to bend this over and just, <laughs> I'm like, and you're, yeah. You're a cheater. Oh, yeah. Sending pictures of your boob. Like, yeah. Have you been cheated on? think possibly. Oh, okay. So you don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I've never been in something long enough to formulate Ooh. a uh, conclusion. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yep. We'll keep it that way. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That'd be... Tell me about this album. Are we going to hear about the relationships and, you know, all uh -huh. of this love talk? When can we expect an album? So an album, hopefully, Jaws talking about Sometime next year, I'm. I say a few years would be. Wait, nice. oh, hold on, a few years. <laughs> about five I? years, I think, would be great of just like consistent <laughs> studio time. And <laughs> no one is happy with your answer right now, except you. <laughs> consistent studio time and vacation, and just watching my dogs grow up Aww. would be great. <laughs> but why? Why do you want to wait a while? I, okay. think, <laughs> I think Maxwell, I think Andre 3000, I think Lauren Hill, like all of these legends, they take their time. Absolutely, they do. I want to take my time. Oh, my I God. I know. Those are really hard examples to bring up right now. I get what you mean. You However, I, I mean, we love your voice. Thank you. And we just want more. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And I, I just think that. Your what your gift is something that is very much needed. Thank you. And I say that in the nicest way possible with, you know, the climate of how music is and, you know, the artists that are out now. You're just special, Ari. Thank you. And I say that because Damn. I've seen this journey that you've been on and I know how much this music means to you. And, you know, the ups and downs, it's not easy. It's just it. you're we appreciate what you do. You. So please don't wait five years. I won't. I, I'm a because that sounds out of this world. Yeah, <laughs> like literally. I'm hoping like maybe next year. I mean, we have get close. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, we do. Did you fight? Did close. you did you fight your team to not release this or something? Damn, I did kind of. I, I, <laughs> but but what, is it? No, nah, I wasn't. It wasn't a real fight or anything. But, oh, but, I, yeah. It was, but is it because you're a perfectionist that you're just like, what is it that holds you back? From wanting to put out, I'm sure, amazing music. I don't know. I mean, I just, I've just be one the. I don't know. It just depends. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. Get close is coming out. Yes. But there's also that fear of just like, when you drop different types of vibes, like okay. people expecting like super fast Ari or like, you mm -hmm. know, or there's people who are expecting super slow Ari, and then pressure happened, and they're like, "What is this fast, happy? You know, like mm -hmm. what is this?" So it's like that validation thing, just wanting to please everybody. So Ugh. it's kind of annoying dropping songs sometimes. I get it's it. It's like sometimes people are like, "Well, what is this?" And yeah. it's like it's not for you actually, right? It's like, <laughs> and it's okay. It's for me, yeah. like you know, like I, I, I kind of. I needed to release this, you yeah. know. Well, but if it's right, if if the when the project is right, it's gonna come out. Period. I love that. I just want to feel com comfortable, like confident about it. 
So next year it's just grind, grind, grind studio until it's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And focus on you and your health. And that's really, for me personally, Number I want to see that for you. Thank you. That's most important. Thank you. Because when it's all said and done, that's all you're going to have. Thank you. And I have to know, what did you and Erica Badu talk about? When? There's so at many fashion, different times. The, at the fashion show. Oh, wow. It was nothing. Nothing? Just, okay, just what about sweet, the other just times? Sweetness, just sweetness. Just, hey, like, hi, you know. Okay. But, like, other times, I mean, there was things we talked about <laughs> we, that we talked about. Yeah. You know? I was so curious. When I saw the photo, I was like... I want to know what they talk about. Oh, wow. Nothing, nothing. How is she? I've never met her, so, you know, I've only heard great things wow. about her. How was the energy for you? She's cool, sweet. Yeah. Um, I just feel like just certain women are like women. <laughs> and, like, the embodiment of women, like strength. Like, Ooh. I just feel like strength. I feel softness. I feel feminine energy from her. Like, she's just... She's just, I don't know, regal, like. Ooh, regal. I love that. It's just certain women, like like um, Tasha Smith. Like, mm -hmm. I just feel like they're just women. Like, you know, like, just, I just, I'm mesmerized, and I just want to grow to be, like, <sighs> these strong, you know. And I don't mean strong in, like, the annoying, strong black women thing. Like, just, like, a, I just see strength. I mm -hmm. see just class act, like, just everything. I don't know. And I, I. I love it, and I just want to be that. And she's just, just so sure. They're so sure. Mm. It seems so sure and Confident, so secure. Yeah. Clear. Yes. Yeah. That's I love exactly that. It. That's yeah. what I wanted to know. It's like, how is her energy? Is it what that. we perceive her aura to be just clear and just, you know, she commands knows. like this. There's a presence. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so cool. To me, in my heart, that's what it feels like. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, Ari, I got you a little present what? from the last time we spoke oh. before we wrap up. Oh, thanks. Because I've basically asked you a gazillion questions, so I really appreciate you taking the time to no be problem. here today. This was awesome. Yay. Was a great interview. So the last time we spoke, uh -huh. we talked about... Oh, hold on, Katrina. Oh, can you right. get that? Hold on. Let's thank you, Christy. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. We talked about getting fought together, and we never did. And it broke my heart. However... I got you a little present, oh. and it's not far, like, from the restaurant right now, but it's a mm -hmm. little something if you're in your hotel room. Oh. Open it and keep it because it's my way of saying, hey, we still got our fun That's day so to sweet. go on. And just a little something for the hotel room. It's a prepackaged pho, but I just want you to know I didn't forget. Thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah, of course. It was amazing. Yeah. Of course. Of course. And congrats again on Get Close. And we'll be waiting for when it's right. We'll be waiting. Shout out to Wes, the director. Oh, such a yeah. great vision. Thank you. It turned out great. Were you nervous when the love interest in the video picked you up and on the count and put you on the counter? Do you remember that? I initially was like, let me see what, what he can do. Right. And he did that. Yeah. He did that. Oh. Yeah. He okay. just, you know, I'm crazy. You did it. <laughs> <laughs>